in this video I'm going to show you how to work out the square roots of a complex number. So here I've got to work out the square root of the complex number 3 plus 4i. So when I square root this, it will give me the root. Okay, and the root I'm just going to write as a plus bi for the moment. I don't know what these values are yet, these real coefficients, but I'm going to work them out. So the next step is to get rid of this square root symbol. So I'm actually going to square both sides of this equation. So when I square the left hand side, well if you square a square root, it just cancels out that square root symbol so that you're just left with 3 plus 4i. And on the right hand side, well, I need to square this. So if you square root a plus bi, remember, not square root, square it, when you square it, it's like multiplying it by itself. So it's like writing out that bracket two times. So I'm going to expand the brackets on the right hand side to see what that gets me. So when I expand those brackets, a times a is a squared. Then I've got a times bi, which is just a bi. And then I've got bi times a, which is the same. And finally, I've got bi times bi, which is just b squared i squared. Oops. Okay, so let's just tidy this up a little bit, this equation. Because on the right hand side, well, I've got a b i plus a b i, so I've got two lots of a b i. And here, I've got an i squared. And remember, i squared is equal to minus 1. So if I multiply b squared by minus 1, it gives me negative b squared. So, because the left hand side of the equal sign is equal to the right hand side, it means that the real parts on the left hand side must equal the real parts on the right hand side. And the same with the imaginary parts. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to form two equations, one equating the real parts in this equation, and the second one for the imaginary parts. So let me start with the real parts. So on the left hand side, the real parts are the bits without the letter i, so the number 3. And on the right hand side, the parts without the i, well, it's just those ones there. So 3 must equal a squared minus b squared. Now for the imaginary parts, so the parts with the letter i. So on the left hand side, I've got 4, because remember, we only take the coefficient of i, so the number in front of the i. So just the number 4, not 4i, four just 4. And on the right-hand side, we've got 2ab in front of the i. So now, what we're going to do in the next part of this question is solve the simultaneous equations. So I'm just going to clear the board to make a bit more room. Okay, so now it's just like when you're solving simultaneous equations when you've got one linear equation and one quadratic. So what we need to do to start with is rearrange equation number two to get either a equals or b equals. So I'm going to do that first. So with equation two, I'm going to organise it so it says a equals. So a is equal to four divided by two b. So I'm just dividing both sides of that equation by 2b so that it cancels on the right and I'm left with a and then you've got 4 divided by 2b which simplifies to just 2 over b. So that's your first step is to rearrange the linear equation to get either a equals or b equals okay because now we're going to substitute that into the quadratic equation at the top. Okay so we know the value of a is the same as just 2 over b. So I can change my value of a in that top equation, number 1, to this instead. So that then I have an equation that's just in b and I can solve the equation to find b. So I'm going to write out that equation number 1 again, except when I get to the letter a, I'm going to swap in this part. So I'm going to write 2 over b squared instead of a squared. But everything else in the equation stays the same. Now, let's just tidy this up a little bit. We're going to get rid of the brackets. So I'm going to square those brackets there. So 2 squared is just 4, and b is squared as well. Now I need to get rid of this fraction. So remember, to get rid of the fraction, you multiply by the denominator. So we're going to multiply everything in this equation by b squared. 
So I'm going to carry this on up here. So if I multiply 3 by b squared, I get 3b squared. If I times this by b squared, well, it just cancels out the b squared, and I'm left with 4. And over here, b squared times b squared is just b to the power of 4. Now, we're going to move everything to one side of the equation, because if I'm solving an equation like this, I want it to have equal 0. So I'm going to move these two terms over to the left-hand side. Remember, when they move across the equal sign, they change sign. So this negative b to the power of 4 changes to a positive. This hasn't moved, so it hasn't changed sign, so it's still positive. But this positive 4 changes to a negative 4. And now I've got equals 0. Well, we don't really know how to solve this equation, b to the power of 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it into a quadratic equation. So I'm going to say that x is equal to b squared. Okay, so we're just going to swap in, and you'll see why, because at the end we can swap back and find the value of b. But just for the moment, we're going to pretend that b squared is equal to x. So, that means this value here would be x squared, because if I square this and I square this, it gives me b to the power 4. This over here becomes 3x, because remember, b squared is just equal to x, so we've got 3x. And then you've got minus 4 equals 0. Well, now it's just solving a quadratic, and hopefully you know how to do that. So solving quadratics, you might want to use the quadratic formula, or I think this is a nice one, so I'm going to try and factorise. So if I factorise this, I can see, if I put the x values in there, these two numbers multiply to give negative 4, but they add to give positive 3. So it must be positive 4 and negative 1. Okay, because they satisfy both of those conditions. So that means x is equal to negative 4, remember it's this number but the opposite sign, or positive 1. Okay, so I found my values of x. Okay, so now we need to substitute that back into here because remember we're trying to find b, not x. And remember that x is equal to b squared, so that means either minus 4 is equal to b squared or positive 1 is equal to b squared. So using that, let's see what happens. So minus 4 equals b squared. Well, if I square with both sides here, b is going to be imaginary. And remember, a and b, they have to be real coefficients, okay? So this one is not allowed. We, we only want the real option. So now we're going to use this value here. So it will be 1 is equal to b squared. So if I square root both sides, it means that if I square root 1, I just get 1, except it could be positive or negative root 1. So we found the value of b. It's positive or negative 1. So now we have to find the value of a. So we go all the way back to the beginning, to the linear equation up here. And remember, a is equal to 2 divided by b. Well, we've got the values of b here. It's either positive or negative 1, because the square root of 1 is just 1. So I'm going to use that equation. Okay, so I'm just going to write it out again here. So a is equal to 2 over b. And I substitute, one by one, the values of b into this equation. So if b is positive 1, so we'll just take that one to start with, a must be equal to 2 divided by positive 1, which is just 2. So that's the first solution. But if b is equal to negative 1, then a must be 2 over negative 1, which is negative 2. So we've got two solutions. We've got a is positive 2 and b is positive 1, or we've got a is negative 2 and b is negative 1. So if we put that back into the original format for the complex number, Remember, a was always the coefficient of the real part, and b was the coefficient of the imaginary part, which means our two complex roots would either be 2 plus 1i, or negative 2 minus 1i. So they are the square roots of the complex number. Okay, so as you can see, it's a lot of algebra, it's just solving simultaneous equations, when one is linear and one is quadratic. So you might want to just practice your algebra there. And uh, yeah, so that's it.